On today's part of my take, we have Eli Manning. Awesome interview with Eli Manning. Future Hall of Famer Eli Manning. We've wanted to interview him for a very long time, uh, and it was fun. It was a great time. We're going to talk a little Masters. We have Fire Fest of the Week. I got a big announcement. Ooh, little teaser there. Mm. So you're going to have to listen till the end. No spoilers. Uh, and we have a great Just Friday show. Going to have some fun with the boys. Before we do that, Shady Rays. Shady Rays, the official shades of part of my take. Over the past year, thousands of you have joined the team and are rocking their shades daily just like us. There's a lot to love about Shady Rays, starting with their best sellers. The classic black timber polarizes a dual wood frame with black wood texture on the outside, which actually feels like real wood. Shady Rays has you your back with one of the most insane warranties, not only one, uh, on their best sellers, but on all their shades. Replacement, if lost or broken for any reason. We all know the outdoors can be unpredictable, so when life happens, Shady Rays has your back with a brand new pair. Even with that strong of a warranty, they will manage to make quality sunglasses that are as good as any. We're rocking these every day and can attest to the 100,000-plus verified five-star reviews. So here's your chance to get two high-quality pairs of shades for the price of one. Shop popular styles like the Classic Black Timber and Calamisa Blush. Plus, much more starting at just $48 exclusively for our listeners only. Head over to ShadyRays.com. Use code PMT for 50% off two or more pairs. That's code PMT for buy one, get one free shades. Redeemable only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades. We love Shady Rays. ShadyRays.com. Use that promo code PMT. We are rocking them all summer long. We're also brought to you by our friends at HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that is incredible. We all have it. We love it. HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. Try meals ready in 20 minutes or less. Lightning uh, prep recipes and quick breakfasts and lunches. Perfect for your busy schedule. It's super easy. They deliver it all, and you're ready to cook. And guess what? There's nothing better than a home-cooked meal. I had this delicious uh, chicken with rice. It was an incredible meal. Like had some kind of uh, soy glaze, and it was so, so good. And it took me no time to whip up. So over four and five HelloFresh customers say HelloFresh helps them lead a healthier lifestyle because guess what? You're not snacking. You're not doing it. You're eating a, ho- a good home-cooked meal with delicious, low-calorie, carb-smart, and vegetarian options available each week. You can pick your meal plan. It is also cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. It is uh, found to be 28% che- cheaper and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing that delicious quality. So go right now to HelloFresh.com slash PMT12, that's PMT12, and use code PMT12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash the number one, the number two, so PMT12, and use code PMT12 for 12 meals, including free shipping. So go again, HelloFresh.com, use code PMT12, and you get 12 meals, including free shipping. I love it. You should love it. We all love it. Uh, so go check it out. America's number one meal kit. That's their tagline, and I love their tagline as much as I love their meals. HelloFresh.com slash PMT12. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by HelloFresh.com. Go to HelloFresh.com, use code PMT12 for 12 free meals and free shipping. And also ShadyRays.com, use that code PMT there, and you get 50% off two or more pairs of awesome sunglasses. Today is Friday, April 9th. I miss Tiger Woods. Yeah, well, I... I tried to put a bet on him to as a future to win the Masters, just out of respect, mm-hmm. just to get the good luck going. And, you know, the sad thing is, like, if that bet would have hit, I would have donated all the winnings to the Same. control room. I would have doubled it. Yeah. I would have doubled it. and I would have matched your double. I would have doubled it, and then I would have uh, tripled the double. So what is that? Compound interest, six, carry the two. Uh, it would have been a lot of money. A ton of money to the That we were room. going to give away. But I there's something about – I mean, the Masters are great. The ma- we've had Masters without Tiger Woods, but he just feels like the force that is around, especially on the Thursday and Friday. Mm-hmm. It's Saturday and Sunday, once we get to moving day, which we're golf guys, we know what moving it's day moving is. Day, it's yes. Saturday. But once you get to the weekend, the field kind of clears up, and you're like, all right, here's what we got. 
But the first two days, you're just watching golf and try. You know, we're we're rooting for Brooks. You're Brooks trying to see how things there. shake out. But there, Tiger was that force. Yeah, he he is the force that would draw you in. Right now, it's like yeah, we want Brooks to do what we. It's tough to root for the course at Augusta too, because mm -hmm. in many ways the course is already Goliath when yes. it comes to the Masters. It is the bit. It you know everyone talks about how nice it is. And uh, listening to the broadcast this year, I'm more convinced than ever that the birds are actually piped in crowd noise. Agreed. Dollars. There's one bird in particular. They play its call over and over and over. They're it's getting cardinal, I think. They're getting sloppy with it. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it might be a whippoorwill. Oh. But whatever it is, it's it's very obvious. You guys need better birds. You need a new bird guy on your soundtrack. Yep. Because it's getting to the point where it's kind of obvious. Yeah. And uh, the uh, this course is playing tough. That's going to be the big story coming out of the uh, first day. The greens are dry. Mm -hmm. It's running everywhere. Well, you want to play early in the day. You want to play early in the day. You want to hope for a little rain. And Bryson DeChambeau, who has dubbed this a par 67 at the time of this taping, is plus four. Mm. So more like a par 75, did, 76? Did he reveal? What's par, 71? Two. 72, so 76. Did he reveal what was in his bag? He uh, was trying to get us to all to be interested. Bryson did a classic Bryson thing where he's like, okay, I've got a little bit of goodwill going from the video. I've made a friend of Big Cat. Big Cat is sweating me right now. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're bringing back sweating. He, Big, oh, you, were, you were sweating dude, Bryson a did little you bit. Dude, did you see the news that we found uh, after we taped the show on Tuesday that Bryson, to clear his head before playing in the Masters this weekend, went and played a little disc golf. He banged some chains. Mm. So he's... I actually wouldn't put it past Bryson to do everything just to get favor of this podcast. Yeah, what and that's not narcissistic at all. I just think that he really wants our love. If he if he puts a Doge uh, driver cover yeah. on his big boy on his like fifty inch driver, at that point I'll be like, yeah, Bryson to the moon. But until that happens, <laughs> when he when he wears a hat that says Bears are back, yeah, <laughs> be like I fucking I'm on to you, dude. Yeah, so Bryson, uh, you you kind of threw away what little goodwill you had going. By doing the whole, like, guess what's in my bag this week, and I'm going to shock the world. And and we're not going to bash Bryson for this whole show. Isn't that a but, ludicrous song? What in the world's in my bag? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Bryson. Come on, dude. But here's here's the problem with Bryson uh, that, well, he's got a lot of problems. But the biggest issue that he is facing today, and this is uh, very similar to relief pitchers in MLB. When you're bigger and you're doing well, you're strong. And when you're doing poorly, you're fat. And he looks fat today. Yeah. Not to body shame, but it's there's something about the plus four next to his name that the strength now becomes a little pudgy. Yeah, well, there's that. And there's also the fact that we also have Patrick Reed out there. And Bryson isn't even the most unlikable, unlikable guy. Right. That's Patrick. I, I'm, I somehow like Patrick Reed more because he's more of a villain than Bryson is. I put a future bet on, on Patrick to win this Masters, mainly because, I yes, I would like to hear Jim Nance recite Imagine Dragons lyrics yes. again. Yes, uh, But also because, like, he is – he's the ultimate heel in golf. Bryson is, like, he's an aspiring heel. Right. He's he not hasn't there embraced yet. it. He still would – the difference is Patrick Reed knows everyone hates him, and he kind of has just accepted it, and he'll complain about rules, and his wife will complain about rules and say, oh, everyone's vilifying Patrick – Bryson, if Bryson could flip the switch and we all just loved him, he would take that. Absolutely. Patrick Reed, I don't think, would take that anymore because he's like, wait, if you all love me, then I can't complain about rules and cheat anymore. Yes. No deal. Yes. I can't steal wallets, allegedly, out of my college roommate's uh, locker room. Right. Bryson would, uh, he would try to get away with cheating. Patrick Reed would cheat, then get away with it and be like, fuck you guys. Yeah. I just cheated and won. Right. Bryson would be like, I didn't actually cheat. Brooks is out there. I want to just, we, you know, we as a podcast don't make excuses, mm -hmm. but I also am just stating a fact. Brooke is, Brooks is playing on basically one leg. He's, uh, it's probably the most heroic thing I've ever seen in any sport ever. And again, we're, we're not making excuses. We're not biased. We're stating facts. Um, this is like Willis Reed. This it's, is Kirk Gibson. This is all those things. Byron Leftwich being helped down the combined. fairway by his offensive line. Correct. Everything that you can think of, all any any of the lowest moments where someone just triumphs over all these injuries and, and hardships, that's Brooks shooting plus two today. Yeah, Ian Rapport tweeted out some report. I don't know if this is a HIPAA violation. Somehow he got advance notice on what Brooks' injury was, but it sounded like the most painful thing ever. It mm -hmm. was like he had, he had to have like two tendons – 
reattached to his shattered patella. Yeah. And it's it, 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 he said that it was a one month surgery or is a six month surgery. He's playing on it after one month. It was so bad of an injury that Hank bet against him. Yeah, Hank bet against him. Great job, Hank. Hank, uh, a theme of this show is we get someone who's, you know. Wait, do you guys have a future on who, him to win the Masters? I didn't bet against oh, him. Oh, I didn't bet, bet against, against him. Against oh, you, no, you don't wait. Hank, so you don't think he's going to win the I, Masters? Hank, I don't bet. Because I put my money where my mouth is. I don't and put bet my him money on him on a future to win the Masters. I don't no, you put, bet on, on him to lose against Bubba Watson today. Yeah, it's a little bit of a Billy football, you know, hedge yourself. No, I don't mm. bet. He's, I knew I he was either going to come out, be a hero, and win the Masters, or maybe he was going to come out because Big Cat was saying, like, his knee's kind of messed up. He might come Listen, out, try too hard, and realize that it wasn't. it's not his year when, and have a bad round. So I bet against him in the first round. Here, but I believe in him for the full time. Here's the thing you don't understand, Hank. When you love someone as much as I love Brooks Kepka, I don't need to put money down. His my you know what my future is on Brooks Kepka? What? Seeing him happy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Seeing him succeed. Seeing him beat all the impossible odds of his injury. He's a, a walking paralyzed you, person. You can't put a dollar amount on Brooks putting on the green jacket this year. That that to me would be the most iconic moment in sport. I would actually Ever. it would actually cheapen it yeah. if we were making money Correct. on that moment. Got yes. it. It would absolutely and you know what? You this is just par for the course for Hank. He's just you're addicted to rooting against our friends. You're the opposite of Drake. Mm -hmm. You're you're. Imagine if I never bet the Broskis. Mm -hmm. That's what Hank That's says you. every day. I did gonna, bet the Broski. No, you bet no, against, you bet no, against the, the Broski. Broski. No, you didn't. Um, our I other, bet the Broski. Our other Broski, Max Homa, is doing, bet on him too. He's doing pretty well. Uh, he he did reach out after the uh, five thousand to one to make the cut joke. Uh, he said that was not nice. But, oh, but, interesting. But who said he, that? Wait, no, which no, one of us said it that? Was no, a, no. It was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, and right. Max said, but. I'm a, the ultimate jokester online, so that's funny. Mm -hmm. You can take it. Yeah. Instead of being like, hey, Max, I didn't bet. A, do you have a bet on Max? Yeah, I do. I do, too. And he's losing it. What? So thanks, Max. What is he doing? I, I, you know who I, Louis Oostel's a thousand. You know who I really want to see? What are you doing fucking betting all these these pairings? What are you? What are you you're just. I'm riding high. <laughs> you riding are, high. That Baylor, you that Baylor one is, you know. You're in the post. Got the juice You know what flowing. you're in? You're in that post, like. I figured out gambling mode. Yeah, Do I mean, I'm taking trips to PFT Philly in the had morning, that a few weeks ago. That's I did. How, that's I how got I, I got humbled when he's like, "Hey, I want to go to Detroit yep. the next weekend because I want to uh -huh. gamble some more." I was like, "Yeah, well, I don't think fast. so." I mean, the Brooks, the Brooks bet it was Bubba Watson versus Brooks, and Bubba Watson bogeyed three out of the last four holes. Oh, Good, you deserve it. Yeah, that's karma. Hank. Still that's the universe smiling upon us and front and taking a leak onto you. You deserve it. I'm that also shit. I'm rooting for the guy, I think he's tied for second right now or tied for third as we as we're recording this. His name is uh Zlatoris. Zlatoris? Like, like Clitoris. I I would love to spend a weekend hearing Jim Nance say Zlatoris. Yeah, Zl I think it's Z L I like if Zorro performed a female circumcision. There it is, Latoris. If you do have a gambling problem, you should call 1-800-GAMBLER. There you go. Thank you, Hank. You do have a gambling problem because you bet against our friends. Responsibly, though. That's a that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Betting against our friends is a problem. But it's not irresponsible. It isn't, but it is also hurtful. It's an issue. But yeah. I actually I bet on him, so I don't really understand where you're coming from. You bet on it. You just, you only bet Sorry. on him. It's, I did exactly what Billy does. A defense little... ready when we said, "Why'd you bet against him?" So you could be like, "Well, actually, I put five dollars on Billy? him to win." Smart, right? On, honestly, looking back on it, that Excel spreadsheet. Wait, no, 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 no. Is don't the don't be honest. Things ever, it's a good idea. Legitimately. <laughs> It was the dumbest thing you've ever done. You I spent so much time trying to do it, it to was squeeze so out like two dollars. And it wasn't fun. Uh, uh, we did have we did have a dad sighting at the Masters, and not the John Ram I one. Know, I saw Rory McIlroy hit his dad with yeah. an iron shot. That was pretty sick. Pretty funny. Um, all right, what else we got? Oh, Sean Miller got fired from Arizona. I love college basketball's trend that it's like you either get fired or you get a lifetime contract, like Bill Self. Uh, did you see that Sean Miller? Apparently, he's going to uh, get an assistant coaching job in the NBA. So that seems like his immediate future, which is hilarious that someone who was... With the Suns? Well, no, it's someone who is under sanctions uh, and, and alleged sanctions and all these things and bad dealings with agents and everything... And then someone owes him a favor in the NBA because yeah. he's just huh. quickly becoming. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, like, huh? But that's, that's interesting. At the same time, that seems like the logical because he's not going to get hired anywhere in college basketball right now. The only place that would hire Sean Miller 
would be LSU, who, who currently has their own coach that they're just not going to fire. Right. Real way because it's Louisiana yes. and they don't care. And so anywhere else, would they, there's probably going to be like a show cause for him where he won't be able to get a job. So it does make sense he would go to the NBA, rehabilitate himself. Who's the, who's the basketball version of uh, Nick Saban? Where if you're in trouble, you just go hang out with him for a couple months. And the next thing you know, you're hot again. Who would that be? Coach K. Pop? Rick Pitino. Coach, coach, coach the USA team in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah hang be out on Pop. that staff. Yeah. yeah. Be on the staff. Uh, yeah, maybe Rick Pitino. Rick Pitino will get you under control. So, yeah, I think it's going on the USA staff is like the big rehab. And you get to, you know, it's not cheating, but Coach K just – you know, getting to be friends with all of the NBA All Stars, and then like when he goes on recruiting visits, being like, "Oh, you want me to Facetime LeBron?" Again, not cheating. Here's but my goal. Brilliant. I would say that's a gray area, a mm. major gray area. I'd say it's brilliant. No, I'd say that's brilliant. Pretty fucked up. That he cares he's about our country, pretending to to care about our country, but really there's some ulterior well, he also motives. Went to Army, you know, served the country. Clearly has a, a mm. more passion for the country I'm than anyone in this room. Uh, I, do, I would do you not care about that. the troops. We, yeah. we very much do, Hank. I yeah. think that Coach would, K is uh, essentially a war profiteer. Actually, I care so much about the troops. I co-hosted ZBT today. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So how about that? And I said that uh, if there was someone who needed to get my covering fire, I'd pick Billy. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I care about the troops so much. I have several wins in war zone. Which yeah. you don't have. Yeah. Because you treat your troop body like there's another one hanging in the closet. Also, I, I care about the troops so much that I, at the end of co-hosting ZBT, I said that I would, I'm thinking about joining the Marines, and then they said that I'm past the age limit. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to, but I would have. They, they should do a senior tour. <laughs> a senior uh, tour. Marines. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else that we got cooking in the sports world? Kind yeah. of a light, like little dull. Uh, you know, Masters are gonna be great this weekend. But there's like we had a billion day baseball games yesterday, which were awesome. Shout out to Pablo Sandoval. Pablo Sandoval, comeback player of the weekend, mm-hmm. comeback player of the year. He's hit two dingers now as a designated hitter, and he's fatter than he was. Love it. ever. I love they, it. that. Should be the new NFT. Like the people forget. We don't talk enough about the clip where Pablo Sandoval is so fat that when he swings, his belt explodes. Yes. That is in, that's maybe the best video clip of all time in any genre. That should be an NFT. Yes. Or Bartolo Colon hitting the home run. Yeah. Both those. That one is the best. He was like, Bartolo was a little, he was shorter. Pablo is just probably 300 pounds right now. Yeah. He's a big, he's a big, big boy. Also, we got an answer to the Shohei Otani uh, question that we asked Dan Heron. I, this is just baseball, not having fun. But technically, when he hits as a pitcher, there is no DH. That's what the answer is. Oh, so in the AL, you you make the choice to have a Correct. DH. So he technically isn't playing two positions at once, which, again, makes it so not fun. Like, it God should be he's DH and pitcher. Agreed. So that if he gets pulled from the game, he can stay in as the DH. But wait, what if you have, if you have a position player that sucks at hitting on that team? Are you allowed to not have that person hit? No, I, I don't think like, so. That's no. only for a pitcher? Yeah, which would be the ultimate, like, could you imagine being Huge an cup. MLB player yeah. and being like, hey, we're not going to have you hit today? It'd be like Little League when they <laughs> like when, when they have to, every kid has to play like a half an inning and they're like, all right, go into right field for this half an inning. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, I, I unveiled my formula today. It started to hit already. I'm just going to bet against the Pirates every single yeah, day. Yeah, they're bad. Every day, bet against the Pirates. And I think there was a guy that did it back in 2010, 2011, and it, it made national news at the time. I kind of kept that in my back pocket for the next time the Pirates were going to be like noteworthily bad. Yeah, I think their over-under was 59 and a half. And when you have a position player that pitches in a game in like the first four games of the season – that's that's a good red flag for this season has already been sold out. Yes. So I'm just going to bet literally every single game against the Pirates and hope for the best this year. Yes. So far, so good. Um, all right, let's. Should we do our interview with Eli Manning? Billy, did you have anything else? How you doing, Billy? Doing well. Doing well. <laughs> <Talking to> Mike <laughs> Billy. That was incredible. <laughs> the walk off. That hit was by fucking the Mets. incredible that you just answered my question without. <laughs> well. <laughs> He forgot oh. that we were recording a podcast. <laughs> I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting. You thought we were just having guy time. Oh, I love it, Billy. We're just broing out. Oh! oh. 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 Uh, you were saying embrace the bait on the Mets. Yeah, yeah. the Striker Michael Conforto hit. leaning into a pitch with the old Barry Bonds elbow pads, which 
if if you're too young to remember like the the end of the Barry Bonds era, he would go up like a night at medieval times to the plate with so many fucking shin guards and elbow pads, and people would hit him, and it's like he doesn't even. And it would take like an hour. Right it would take like an hour to like yes. take him off and it's then awesome. go walk to first. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I kind of respect the move that Conforto did. Now I would hate it if it was done against my team or any team that I was rooting for at the time. Right. But it was a strike. The pitch was a strike, and he leaned into the strike zone with his elbow pad. It hit him, and then Keith Hernandez had an aneurysm afterwards. Like this is bush league crap. Get this guy out. Get this guy uh, off the Mets. This guy shouldn't be playing right now. You don't play the game that way. <laughs> Major disrespecting the game moment, but it was hilarious. And yeah. It's, it's the Mets and the fact that it happened against the Marlins I think is probably no offense Jake probably the best team for it to happen to much like we were saying that Gonzaga we could slander them all we wanted because yes. there aren't a lot of Gonzaga fans like the Marlins there aren't too many Marlins fans did you see by the way speaking of Gonzaga did you see the story that came out that, that Baylor found out Gonzaga had bought six bottles of champagne which that seems like a weird number I guess because they're college kids and there's only so many kids that are over 21. Yeah, are there? But they got ready for the championship with champagne before the game, and Baylor found out. It was bulletin board material. It's for like the guys. Mike McCarthy yeah. watermelons. Like if I had known that fact, that simple fact, it's a no-brainer that Baylor wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake, do you have anything to say about the? We we haven't seen you in a couple of days. You're back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. How are you feeling without college basketball? You okay? I'm all right. Yeah, it's bittersweet because we got so many great memories, but there's no games to look forward to. <laughs> there yeah. are there are a ton of memories. There's, there's so 60, many memories. Sixty eight memories. So many memories. Yeah. So By the way, I, I omitted a few. I think I got to forty. Whoa. Oh yeah. hell yeah. Out of sixty eight plus, you guys each had one. Dave had one. I can start like. That was part of the list, though, Taking away. You didn't have so to you put You could get it yourself there. to, like, 70%. In some way, yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. Um, and you did call the Grand Canyon one, too, which we should all acknowledge. Yes. That was – yeah, you got that one. You were Good right job. about that. Um, all right. Oh, Bryson. Oh, he's plus, plus five. five See what I'm saying? Doesn't he look a little fatter? Very he fat. does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's just – it's something about the pluses. When you get the plus next to your name or, like, when a reliever comes in and his ERA is, like, 14, mm-hmm. it just quickly it's goes bigger from numbers. power to fat. Also, when you see, like, the red outline on the numbers sometimes, it just it looks like a Golden Corral price tag. Yeah. And that's – yeah, he does look – he looks a little chunkier right now. And also, when you're sad, you look fat. Yes, And he, yes. he definitely has, like, a sulkiness to him right now. Right. And so, yeah, that's, like, that's yeah, worth at least 25 pounds. Yeah, when we're on a live stream. And like things are going well for me, I look skinny. And then when uh, things are going bad, it quickly becomes fat. Yeah, exactly. Like when you lay down on the ground at the end of Mario Party. Yeah. After getting destroyed by Bowser again. We should play some more Mario Party. Yeah, I'm down. We should do that. Should we do that? Mario Kart. No, Mario Party. No, Mario Party was way more fun. Let's do a Mario Party. Sometime in the next week, let's have a little Mario Party game. Oh, one last thing with baseball. Uh, They have, they're checking Trevor Bauer's balls. Oh. His balls are being examined right now. So well, he's he the, has had 10-plus strikeouts in his two starts. He's the first pitcher to have Major League Baseball step in because they said they're going to do this this year. And if they notice higher spin rates, they're going to take one of the balls. So they took Ooh. one of Trevor Bauer's balls today. And they're going to – I don't know what they're going to do. X-ray it? That would be incredible it to if he cheated. A, a forensic analysis? Yeah, it would be funny because like he was the one that noticed the spin rate increase on the Astros, pointed that out, made a big deal out of that. And then it's like the the weapons that he designed are coming back to bite him in the ass. Oh, I need it. I need it. That would be a great story. Um, that would be that would be the ultimate the Astros getting saved story. Yeah. Because everyone would talk about that. Um, all right. Let's get to Eli Manning. It's going to be a great interview. Before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word? Yeah. I want to talk to you guys about MeUndies. MeUndies believes that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. That's why MeUndies sources the softest, most comfortable fabrics imaginable. You can express yourself every day in new limited edition prints because what you wear on the outside should empower you from the inside. That's their whole thing. You know when you rush home to change into something more comfortable? That's MeUndies. That's what you put on. It's like they pull the clouds from the sky and they spin it into undies, socks, bralettes. Bralettes? Bralettes. Bralettes Bralettes and loungewear. You can choose from endless styles in sizes extra small to 4XL. They're sustainably soft micromodal, and their new ultralight breathe fabrics are so comfy and breathable that you can move free or not. It's up to you. MeUndies has a great offer offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, get 15% off and free shipping. They also have a problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, 
they're going to refund it or they're going to exchange it. No caveats, no questions. To get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash take. That's MeUndies.com slash take. The interview with Eli Manning is also going to be brought to you by Icon Pass. Icon Pass is a has a brand new season unlocked. The promise of adventures ahead and endless stoke on the horizon. It's a ski pass. It's a snowboarding pass. Now on sale, you can own it all with Icon Pass. You can own the season, own the stories, own the stoke. With pass options starting at only $399, adult and exclusive spring savings. There's an adventure for every type of rider, both new to the mountain and longtime shredder. Lock in the 21-22 season with up to 200 bucks savings on child passes, up to $100 in renewal discounts, and a new payment plan from as low as $0 down and 0% APR, unlocking access to more than 40 unique Icon Pass destinations from the second you score your pass and stake your claim to the 21-22 season. You've got an entire season of sweet stuff to look forward to. Explore pass options at IconPass.com. That's I K O N pass.com now here he is eli manning okay we now welcome on a very very special guest it is future hall of famer eli manning he is uh he and his brother peyton i don't know if you heard of him they have uh, an exclusive nft artwork uh the manning legacy collection some of the stuff goes uh supporting children's hospital there's going to be the helmet catch. There's going to be all kinds of cool stuff. NFTs are the rage. So this is going to be exciting. Uh, Eli, we are very pumped to have you on. Did I do anything wrong by saying future Hall of Famer there? Are you a Hall of Famer? <laughs> start with the hard uh, question. Yeah, start with that. You know, it's, it's not up to me. So, I, you know, if you want to say it, you're, you're welcome to. I did, I, it's not something... In the script, I say, "Hey, when you introduce me, you have to say this or, or anything of that sort." So, uh, you know, it's one of those deals. You know, I, I kind of enjoy and laugh about the conversations about it and the fact that it is kind of create, you know, been such an issue and not just now. I feel like it's been talked about for the last five years, but uh, it's not something that I lose sleep about. And uh, and if you know, if it happens one day, it would be a great honor. If you were to vote on yourself for the Hall of Fame, would you vote you in? Um, you know, maybe. Hey, I don't know. It depends how I was feeling that day. I guess. Good. Uh, I don't know. It's. Uh, you know what? It, I think of all just the great players, and you know, sometimes to to think of yourself belonging with so, you know such you know legends and icons. You know, I, I'm I'm not that um conceited and, and not that confident in myself to say that i belong with those people um and so but uh if 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 they invite me to uh join them and to be amongst them uh i would gladly take a seat and it would be as i said it'd be a great honor so some of this nft stuff you guys have uh paying homage to the manning family the first first family of football and cooper so does Cooper have it the best? Because, you know, Peyton's a Hall of Famer. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame. But Cooper basically has the entire career of, oh, well, he was actually the best Manning, but, you know, injuries derailed his career. Does he get that? Like, w you guys aren't serious when you say Cooper was, was the best, you know, at football, right? Like, you're just you're just being nice to him. Well, you know, he was a he was a, re a receiver that ran a four seven. I mean, I assume he was going to be the best NFL player <laughs> of all time, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a no brainer. And there's a lot of four seven receivers out there that you know that are in the Hall of Fame. Um, and so, you know, with Coop, um, you know, he's he's been the best brother, and he he handled it so well. And I think a lot of people might have had a hard time kind of understand hey you get injuries something you're really just born with it wasn't an injury that happened in football and that your career gets shortened and and you you know watch your two you know brothers go on to have success and play this game but you know he, he's enjoyed coming to every game uh you know there's he i, I never i've never got him a sideline pass in, in my life yet i've seen him uh on the sideline of 45 of my games before so he's a guy that kind of figures things out He's wheeling and dealing. Uh, he, he enjoys watching us. He cheers for us. He lives, you know, used to live every Sunday right there with us. And so he, he's had a uh, he's had a good run just being being a fan of football and, and, and following Peyton and I's career.
One thing that I do think that you're uh, head and shoulders the best at in your family when it comes to playing quarterback is uh, you take a very elegant sack. You know, you've I know that you've practiced. There's an art to how sometimes you'll take a sack before the guy is able to hit you. And it's actually, it's really smart. I've talked with some like running backs about this. There's an art to falling down so that you don't get hurt. You are the king of knowing when to self-sack yourself so you don't get hit. Is that something that you practiced? Like you did stop, drop, and roll drills? Or was there just like an alarm clock that would go off in your head? Because sometimes you would notice if there was a guy coming directly from behind you and you, you, there's no chance you'd be able to see him, but you could like feel his presence. Well, I think as you play, you kind of start to learn a presence, and 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 you know, there's there's times when you can escape, and times when you try to escape, and I think it's a little bit as you you know as you get older, it has some of those you know fast twitch movements start to leave you. Um, you realize that you know there's probably a better chance of something worse happening. Me trying to you know do some some move to get out of here and spin and and avoid this. And sometimes you just got to say, Hey, I'm in, I'm in a bad, I'm in a bad spot right here. And let, let's kind of avoid a, a worse play and, and go down. You, you know, you don't want to ever, it's not giving up. It's not, you know, quitting. It's just, uh, you know, a combination of, like you said, avoiding a huge hit. Uh, you know, you know, there's a time where you can kind of, you know, go, go with the hit a little bit. Um, or being able to throw it and kind of turn your back to a hit so you don't take it right, you know, hit right to the face. So, um, you know, you see, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, it is important to be out there and to be out there, you know, for the whole game and to be out there for the next week. And so if you take every single big hit that's coming your way, uh, it's going to be tough to do that. And so it is a little bit about a, kind of a learning curve of, of how to take hits, how to stay healthy. So the other signature uh, thing from your career, besides the two Super Bowls, which we should note that, uh, in the longevity, which it's still incredible whenever a quarterback plays for any type of streak in terms of starts because it's such a difficult position and, and you get hit so many times, was uh, your face, the Manning face. Do you <laughs> – do you did you know, like, when – it, the Manning face would get captured? Were you like, oh, crap, I had my mouth open there and I was staring off into space. The camera probably got that one. Do you? Because I know you probably didn't pay a lot of attention to social media, but it is a phenomenon and it is something I dearly, dearly miss from both you and your brother after you retired. No, I, I, didn't, I never no, noticed it. And I think, you know, obviously social media wasn't always around and there weren't always these memes and there weren't these pictures of it. So, like, you know, you had – I had a good – you know, 10 years of playing football, whether it's college or my first years in NFL were like, you know, that stuff What really wasn't out there. It wasn't caught. So I, I'd already kind of got into my habits of, of kind of standing there watching the game or reflecting on a play. And you know, you're not thinking about the face that you're making, whether your <laughs> mouth's open or you're just kind of wandering off for a little bit. Like it, it was never a concern. And then, you know, I think at, at that once it kind of came out and, and you see it, you're like, well, that's just it is what it is. If you know, I got too many things to worry about during a game. I can't worry about my my you know face that I'm making uh, at every moment when the camera could be on me. Uh, yeah, and it usually it usually catches you when something good is is not happening. When something bad is happening, that's usually when it's like, all right, let's pan. You know, see what Eli's face he's making here. Kind of the just mouth open, just, you know, <laughs> no emotion face going on right yes. now. So, you know, you know it, you uh, know it. I, if you had like, if you had taken my phone in the year 2014 or 15 and looked at the pictures, you would think I was a, uh, your stalker. Cause you're like, why is, why are there so many pictures of my face in, in your phone? Uh, uh, yes, I mean that could be a great collection. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, we should NFT that, it. We, we should yeah. NFT oh my it. God. Yeah, we give yeah, us one go. real quick. Give us one. Give us your best interp. There it <laughs> there is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, we should NFT it. Are you frozen? It. Oh no, he's fine. Actually, you know what? I bet I guarantee you, every football writer would vote for you to get into the Hall of Fame <laughs> if that was your bust. <laughs> We would all love to see it. And, and it's funny because, like, yeah. obviously, if you were to take a picture of me at any given moment of any given day, the face that I'm just casually making probably looks a million times stupider. Uh, but it just, you know, it happened to be you on the sidelines. I think the cameras actually, like, they told the producers would tell the camera guys, like, instead of trying to find an attractive woman in the stands to zoom in on, just, like, keep this camera. This is going to be the Eli camera for the afternoon. Uh, but, yeah, it was a. Uh, 
It was a, yeah. it was a fun part Eli of the camera, days. and they're just you know, there's one camera on me, and they're like, "All right, we got it. He's making it. Zoom <laughs> in. Yo, go. It, camera two on it live." In a weird way, too, it's it's like I know it's not a compliment, but it should be a compliment because you and your brother and like the Manning family were such an integral part of like every Sunday. You know what I mean? It just felt like the presence was there in the league. And uh, it definitely has felt weird without you guys there. Do you – when when is uh, Arch – can we get him in the league like – can we fast track this, your nephew? Can we get him in the league tomorrow? <laughs> I, you know what? My, my, my parents have kind of said the same thing. It was a, a weird year for them last year. Uh, you know, not having a Sunday of, of, you know, watching one of their kids play football. It had been going on for – for over 20 years, uh, where that was kind of their, their routine. Uh, I think they've enjoyed it a little bit. Just not, you know, it's not just a Sunday. It's, it's kind of the losses or the weeks leading up on the report after a loss or what's in the media on a Monday, Tuesday after a game. I don't, I don't think they missed that part of it, but, um, you know, it's, it, it was weird kind of when Peyton retired for me, not having to, you know, not, not getting to watch his games. Uh, cause I've been doing that since he was in high school. I was pretty much would watch every game in high school, college and the NFL and to, to not have him around. But, you know, uh, I definitely, uh, I do have my nephew, like you said, have, have arts to watch. I can stream his games, uh, from high school football, which is crazy that that's a thing now. So, uh, but streaming his and, and, you know, it's going to be fun getting to watch his, his career and, and for him to kind of go through the, you know, the, the life cycle of playing quarterback, whether it's high school, college, and, and we'll see, we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. You, you guys have done a, a pretty good job. I've, I've read a few things about him where you're trying to keep him kind of insulated and away from, because there is a lot of attention obviously on him, given the family that, that he comes from and, and the position that he plays. But Big Cat and I are kind of recruiting coordinators for Jackson State University. Our coworker Deion yeah. Sanders is the head coach there. Of course. Um, would of course. just going off what you know, do you think he would be open to taking a visit to Jackson State University? <laughs> Not far from New Orleans, you know, it's only about two yeah. two and a half hours away. It's an easy easy drive. I think Dion, you know, Dion's a, a heck of a recruiter and uh, and it's a great program. There's actually a lot a great great history of a lot of a lot of guys at Jackson State going on to play in the NFL. A couple of Hall of Famers uh, and, and, and there as well. So, um, you know, I think uh, there's a possibility. I'll put in a good word for you. Okay, so that means we've we've officially checked off our first box where we made contact with the family. <laughs> yep. Okay, perfect. More Eli Manning in a second, but a quick word from our friends at Black Buffalo. If you dip tobacco, you can stop right now and switch to Black Buffalo. What is Black Buffalo? Black Buffalo is... A dip literally made from edible green leaves and food and uh, great ingredients with the same flavors and texture as traditional tobacco products. So it spits just like real dip, but you don't have to have tobacco in it. It has nicotine in it. It has pouches. I swear by Black Buffalo. I It's, you know, if you're someone who dips and you're trying to quit, Black Buffalo is a great dip alternative out there. Uh, Black Buffalo sells products on their website at blackbuffalo.com and is available in both long cut and pouches as well as nicotine free versions called Zero. So great alternative to dip. You got to check it out. I swear by it. I've been using it for a couple years now. I love Black Buffalo. Use code PMT for checkout for 20% off your first order on blackbuffalo.com. Like I said, they got mint, they got wintergreen, they got straight, they got peach, they got all your favorite uh, flavors, they got pouches, they got long cut, and it spits just like the real thing, but it doesn't have tobacco. So go check them out right now, blackbuffalo.com. Use code PMT at checkout for 20% off. Uh, Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go again to blackbuffalo.com. And then use that promo code PMT or go to blackbuffalo.com slash discount slash PMT for 20% off your first order on blackbuffalo.com. Ditch that tobacco. Get with Black Buffalo. Go check them out right now, blackbuffalo.com. Use code PMT at checkout for 20% off. Okay, back to Eli Manning. Um, So you have Eli's places coming out. It's it's the college version of Peyton Place. Uh, That is awesome. One, you have a way better like going to college towns is is so much fun. What's your favorite one, non in the SEC? So outside the SEC, which you know very well, what's your favorite college town to visit? Ooh, I you know I, I haven't I haven't visited that many college towns outside the SEC to be honest with you. You know I'd love to 
Um, you know, you know, I have not been to any, you know, college games really, uh, besides, you know, went on a recruiting visit to Texas, uh, when I was in high school and saw a game, which is a, a, which is a pretty cool experience, but I'd love to, you know, I'd love to go to Michigan or Ohio state or Notre Dame or go to Oklahoma or, you know, go, go see Oregon to play. So there's, you know, there's kind of a, 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 a list of, of, places I'd love to go obviously you know the pandemic kind of threw that into a wrench last year my first year of retirement but um you know I, I love I just you know I love the history of college football I love the fans and the students and uh just some of the uh the cheers that go on and so I'm excited about this you know new project getting to see some of these these college towns and you know some of the you know the, the great history that's been made there yeah, uh, our producer Hank is a diehard Patriots fan, and uh, I was just wondering if if you could apologize to him for one of the two Super Bowls, which one would you like to apologize for? Um, I I would apologize. I'd probably apologize for the first one, the one in '07, just because I I know you know I I know it'd be you know be nice if they you know went undefeated, went 19 and 0, and and. <laughs> Yeah, it would have um, been nice. Yeah, that would have been that probably would have been nice. That would have been you know they would have gone down as the greatest team of all time in the history of football. They yeah. were you know no questions out None. was the all time greatest team ever to ever play the game of football, <laughs> maybe in any sport. But yeah. now, but now they're not. Now they're not. So <laughs> that's a that's a good apology that wasn't an apology. So uh, I want to get back to NFTs real quick. So the NFT artwork entitled the Manning Legacy Collection. If you could NFT, so if you could NFT one moment from your career that you aren't currently going to sell on April 16th, what would it be? Maybe an underrated like, hey, people don't talk about this moment, but I'd love to NFT it. I, th- I mean, I think we already answered that. I think it's just kind of the, me, you know, it's me staring at things. Uh, I mean, I think, I think, I think you can go through a great, you know, so many options of just like what what I could be staring at or what I could be thinking, and and just in those moments. So. I think we've cre- I think we've created the, you know I think we're excited about that. Yeah, I do think that that's the way to like honestly I I own one NFT right now. I would spend um, probably five to ten thousand dollars just on NFTs of your face, and I'm just like a casual guy right. that that's very like new to the market. That you're going to reach a whole new audience with the Manning face NFTs. That's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. So, what made you get into the NFT market? Like, what was this? Just a totally new. Hey, we, everyone's doing it, but I didn't expect the Mannings to do it, and it's kind of cool. I think, I think what really got us interested, you know, especially me, is that you know you just retire and you're trying to reflect on your career and and you know be able to create something that is so personal, that is so uh, unique, and to get an artist to kind of create a piece of art. Um, that kind of tells your story, your, your football story, and to do it with Peyton, to do it with your dad, to do some uh, of you in college, some in the NFL, and to kind of, you know, use symbols and images and words to uh, kind of, you know, tell that, that story of your football career. And, and, and I thought with, with this new space and do it through um, the NFT where people can use it, they can trade it, they can, you know, have that likeness to it and, and own uh, have that ownership of this digital item. And so I think it's, you know, kind of getting with the new times and, and getting in these alternative assets. And it was just uh, kind of a natural, uh, a natural fit. So really excited about it. So I had one last question. I know PFT has one after me, but so uh, there is an NFT of Peyton, Peyton's Omaha. Did he steal that from you? So Omaha it's kind of funny, yeah. It has it has a long a long history of, of everything going of going on there. So I mean, originally, uh, you know, the Patriots, you know, Tom Brady was using it back in probably '05 and '06, um, and his, you know, their their quarterback coach John Huffnagel came from the Patriots to the Giants. Uh, well, that was probably before that. He came to the Giants in '04. And he had it kind of in our playbook in, in 2004. So, you know, Patriots were probably using that in 01, 02, uh, at least. And so we started using it, you know, and then, you know, Peyton kind of made it famous just because, uh, you know, just on – they turned up the, the mics a little bit louder, I think, in, in some of these games. And and uh, and they caught him saying it in a playoff game where he said it like 58 times in a game. And, and you know, you could not help but just like wondering, why is he saying Omaha? 
this many times. I've never heard anyone say that word. It's not really a football word, uh, you would think. That's that's crazy. So he stole it from you. So you should get all the you. Sh- he owes you money from the commercials and everything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you would think I'd get like a steak, maybe. You know, he's got like Omaha steaks. He's got a key to the city in Omaha. You, you might, you know, you think he'd send me a couple steaks. You would think. Yeah, that's but what no, you should have done. That like you, your word nothing. should have been Rolex. And if you just say <laughs> Rolex enough, you just there get you a sweet sponsorship. See? Now you're thinking you're giving some some young quarterbacks some, some ideas. Like Pass. what what words can we use? Here? Listen, that's the kind of outside the box thinking we provide at Jackson State University. If you know any young quarterbacks that want to maximize their mm-hmm. value in the future, you just send them our way. We'll take great care of them. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I think I, I know a guy. Our intern, guy. our intern is not the smartest. He just texted us in the middle of this interview. He said, is Omaha to stop the blitz D-Day reference? Omaha Beach? That's not it, is it? That is not it. Okay, good. That Thank is you. not it. All right, that was Billy Football's <laughs> question. Uh, my, my last question is just, do you consider Peyton to be a ring chaser? Ooh. A ring chaser? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? Meaning like he, he had to go join a super team to win his second Super Bowl <laughs> and you you know you stuck around with the Giants your whole career you made you made it happen yourself no I, I, I don't consider Peyton a ring chaser I think Peyton wanted to stay in Indianapolis uh you know he had a, a obviously four neck surgeries and um you know that that kind of prevented him the you know, Indianapolis went and drafted Andrew Luck and and released Peyton so uh you know after that you know, he was, you know, he was a free agent. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't, you know, I don't know if Denver was, it's not like he, you know, went there and, and brought a bunch of people in to join his team or if they were con- really considered a, a Super Bowl favorite uh, at that time. And so, um, you know, so I think he went in there, kind of changed the culture a little bit and, and made them a contender every year, uh, you know, to, to win the Super Bowl. So I think uh, I, I'd say he's, uh, far from from a, a ring chaser. Yeah. Well, uh, Eli, thanks so much. We appreciate. It. We know you got to run. Um, and just so you know, every time the Cowboys and the Giants play on Sunday Night Football, we are just fully expecting you to come out of the tunnel because that feel like we watched that game seven billion times uh, in the course of our lives. <laughs> it was. I feel like it was on a lot. You know, every yep. every opening game, every, every you know first game of the season, that was kind of an automatic. I felt like for a long time. Yes, yes. But thank you. We appreciate it. And anytime you want to come back on, we'd love to have you. Week, Henry. I got a few. Okay. Oh, unload on us, week. I got vaccinated today. My arm hurts, and I just oh, feel like, you know oh, I've lost crack. my soul. You know what? Are you, you bragging? I didn't that? post about it. Yeah. You know what hurts, Hank? What? My chest because I had COVID. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. So I'm get vaccinated, you. bro. Um, Are you just rubbing that in Big Cat's face? No, like, I'm, you're not going to get COVID? No, I just. Uh, you think you're better than him? No, 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 no. Uh, Actually, my chest feels fine. My other COVID. Except for I my I mean, chest. my other. Oh, see, it's already affecting me. Um, Your other COVID? <laughs> yeah. My other fire fest is that my girlfriend's on vacation without me. Oh. Where? Not yeah. somewhere nice. Uh oh. Aruba. Oh! Fellas, you. Ver- verbal meme. Ooh. This will be good for YouTube when. When someone's on vacation, I'm not. Damn. <laughs> Ooh. Is that the fist? Ooh. Yeah. No, it's okay with the vein. See if I can get my vein going. Did, okay, got gotcha. you now. Did her other boyfriend take her? Yeah, that's that's what no, I'm curious about. She's on a gal's trip. Is that what she said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. You're what, not nervous? What's her, no. What's her best gal friend's name who's out there? Uh, Charles? F- Francesca. Oh. Francesca. Frank? Yeah. Francis? Francis? Brianna? Oh. Brian? Brian? Sh- you talking about Kelly? Mi- are you talking about Ms. Chicken Fry? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. That sounds like single mingle. Maybe getting a little wild. I mean, you guys are assholes, but sure. <laughs> Sorry. Can we go on vacation? As a no, great question, Billy. No, great I like we question. all Billy, go. Your life is big. A cat earlier said he likes vacations, and I was I had I almost fell out of my chair. But Billy, your your life is a vacation. Like you, your life is a vacation. I know. Verbal meme. This is Hank this weekend while Rhea's out of town, and it's a picture of Stan March covered in jizz. Oh. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of pent up normie, huh? Yeah, he's gonna be looking for uh-huh. maybe maybe toss on some brazzers for him. I know I was rough and rowdy. That was what got him going last time. <laughs> the ring girls? I don't know. Bobby Lang was right before the, the violence. Uh, the, Damn. the title fight. Wait, yeah. Billy did did your dog get a boner to Billy? No, this was this the, the Billy would, the original picture. Billy would be so honored. He needs Roman swipes. He would be so honored to know that he was giving animals erections again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still, he'd be like, still got it. Yep. That frog thing was way in the past. Is that it, Hank? <laughs> yeah, that's it. All okay. right. 
Uh, my, I have well. There's one other one. I don't. I'm, yeah, do I, it. I, do no, it. I don't know. I don't know. I might cut this just because I don't want it to somehow get back to me. I'm sure you've thought about talking about like dog park drama, big cat before, but I just don't want it to somehow get back to this person and then have her. No, me. dog park drama is great. It's not even drama. Well, there's drama where it's like there's a group of people that are always having drinks and like I show up and they never say anything to me. I stand on the side. You've got to be the one to initiate. That's I don't a, want to do that. No, that's too awkward for me. I listen. Okay, that's hold not on. the drama. Hold on. Though. That's Before not even you the drama. get to the drama, that's not just even drama. Dog park. That's not even drama. It's I, just, I used to take I Stella to a, off my mind. to a dog park where it was literally like everyone was best friends with each other, and you just have to make a decision within the first three or four trips. Like, Am right I going to be a dog park person or not? And I think. I saw a small talk. I'm not going to shame, but I'm very comfortable just watching my dog play and then leaving and not having to talk to him. Same. They just dish out drinks sometimes. I'm like PR 101. Yeah. Bring a blunt. No, you need to bring your own. You need to bring your own <laughs> drink. Step it up. It it's always legal felt. In New York. It always felt a little weird. Like I, like I just want to get my dog some exercise and then I'm gonna go hang out with my friends i know but it's yeah. kind of like when someone's like buying shots like, yeah i'll do a shot like you know yeah it, it, you, i don't think about it but then when a lady's walking around with giving out people like uh seltzers i'm like i kind of want one. i you, think they think that you're a cop i think that's what your problem yeah, is so I definitely give off what, cop cop vibes what you need to do hank you need to you need to uh have normie like run nearby them and then just call normie by his name really loudly so they learn your dog's name that's actually the best way to meet those people because mm -hmm. then they start calling your – they learn your dog before oh, they learn Oh, it's Normie's you. dad. Oh, look, Normie's here today. Yeah, and Normie's then, dad. And then you're like, yeah, he, he misses you guys. And then, boom, conversation starter. You got any more of that Hennessy? And then, boom, you're in. No, I, I, I'm with you, though, Hank. I don't – I think you should bring your own drinks because the minute you become, like, a true dog park person, I think it just becomes your whole life. It's just a lot of talk. Like, I think you then have talk. to hang out with them outside of the dog park, yeah, which no. is like, oof. Absolutely not. So that's the thing. I don't think that there is a hangout out. The second somebody oh. offers, the second somebody in the dog park group is like, we should hang out in real life. At that point, COVID. it becomes a little too real for everyone No, else, but I there's think. definitely some dog park people that were, like, they're down. It's they're like CrossFit. They, they got dogs to make friends. All right, so what happened? There's just a dog there named Grandpa. That's a cute name. And? That's the drama? It's not drama. That's what I'm saying. It's not drama. I just I haven't gotten it off my mind. Grandpa, what kind of dog? This is very important. I'm not going to say that. No, tell us the weight. I actually don't even the know. The weight. It's a smaller I, well, dog. Okay, I was going to say, if Gran Grandpa has to be a big dog. Yeah. It's not. How small? Pretty Similar to Norman. Oh, that's bad. So it's like a Chihuahua rat terrier that. size. I don't like it. Either. I think Grandpa works if you have like a hundred and twenty pound dog that's yeah. like just like, oh, here comes Grandpa. Do -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Kind of that. But a little like runt dog just like running around people calling it Grandpa. Nah. Mm -hmm. So you're just thinking about Grandpa all day. Yeah. Can't get Grandpa out of your mind. No. Yeah. What do you think? Is it an old dog? I don't know. I mean, this is actually, here's how you get in with these people. You, I don't want to. I thought you said that you wanted shots. Well, I, I said it's like FOMO. You just got, I get, I get quick bouts of FOMO, but it, okay. it, it dissolves quickly if when you, I realize I would have to have you a small just, talk with these people. You just the want one shot. You want to be offered a shot. Yeah. And yeah, the, you, yeah. Okay. Easy way to do that is just, I, cause I guarantee there's a big overlap between the people who do post on social media about getting their vaccines. Unlike us, Hank, we don't mention that publicly. I'm honestly nervous but, about this entire conversation because if you I wear a giant feel sticker, like I'm not going to be able to go to the dog park. You, you think there's listeners? If, yeah. If you wear right a giant now? sticker that says, yeah. look what I got today. Then they'll be like, Oh, congratulations. And then they'll give you a shot. Hold on. Time out. How old is the person who owns grandpa? Youngish. Like I'm probably going to, I am no, Okay, but there so, are bros there. Okay, like, I've but, met people there that are like, oh. But there's – trust your instincts. They'll be like, yo, dude, I've been thinking about that, about Grandpa for a while. And you might get a drink now to have people recognize you there. Yes. So then you're good. Yeah, I think Grandpa's a great name. It's a it's a beautiful no, dog. No, 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 no. No, you got to sewer the name Grandpa yeah, to the no, other people. No, no, that's the conversation. Like, they'll be like, yeah, it's, it's a little everything. ridiculous, isn't it? What if she's the ringleader and turns them all against me? You should say, you, you know, you should be. You like, gotta take that chance. Like, where's? I don't want to take that chance. I think Grandpa's a great name. She's like, where's Grandma? <laughs> I, I, I thought it was. Nah, I'm not gonna. What? It's a great say name. It, it's a great say name. It, and say no, it's a great name. It. Say it. It's a great name. Say it. I think it's a great name. Say it. Beautiful dog. This is good. Love this the dog good park. Stuff. Dog parks are funny.
it's they're very yeah. weird. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. there's a whole community. It's an interesting, interesting place. Yeah, you got to keep your new knees loose. That's the big tip in a dog park. You, yeah, you'll get taken out from behind. Always got to keep your knees a little bit bent <laughs> or lean against a fence if yeah. you can. No, seriously, you get fucking you get smoked by like a a good like golden retriever in the back of the knees you blow your ACL, ACL out there was uh, there was one point where I took Leroy to a dog park and he picked up a tennis ball that was on the ground and brought it over to me because he was a good boy and uh, the person who owned that tennis ball came over and got mad at me because he punctured it with his teeth I was like well you brought it's a, a dog it's you, a dog you brought a yeah. tennis ball to yeah. a dog park and my dog saw your ball yes and now you're mad because you can't play tennis with this ball anymore <laughs> that you brought to the dog park that's also there's always there's always a, a bulldog at the dog park that gets the tennis ball and never gives it up and mm-hmm. it's always so funny. It is the best. They yeah. just destroy it. They then, lay down. Yeah, and the owner's like, I'm so sorry. It's like, dude, it's okay. You got a bulldog. Yeah. Like, they will never give up balls. Hey, just bring beers. Just just roll in yeah. with like a 12-pack of Coors Light. Yeah, but it's just a small... I'm not a small talker. I'm not built for that life. Are you a long talker? No, I'm just a... Not a talker? Yeah. Well, I'll talk, <laughs> I'll talk but the small talk. Like, conversations that... So how about going nowhere COVID? when it starts yeah. and, and it ends up going nowhere and you just wasted 20 minutes. Well, let's practice. Talking about nothing. Oh, what's the and name? like, oh, what's... where do you work? I'm like, oh, I would do uh, yeah. audio engineering. I That's try, what you I, say? I try. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I just don't want to. I don't want to like I do video production. Yeah, you should like, be like, I'm the I'm the grand pooba of a uh, Jenga league. Well, like I like if you <laughs> play Barcelona app, download it right now. Yeah, spin chicklets contest closes tomorrow. <laughs> um <laughs> I just don't, I you know, because once the Barcel conversation, part of my take, it just opens a new can of worm. But if you say, like, oh, I work for a podcast, people are like, okay, fucking weirdo. Yeah, no, that does, mm-hmm. that it ends it the never conversation works. Like, oh, what podcast, man? I just say sports media. What? Yeah. I say video production usually. And yeah. Just hopefully they don't inquire more. Yeah. I still say I'm a blogger because that's a great way to just end the conversation yeah. immediately. Yeah. No one wants to ask a follow-up question <laughs> about that. That's true. They're like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, your sorry. life is taking a bad <laughs> They're turn. like, sorry I asked. Yeah. All right, PFT, your fire fest? Uh, my fire fest of the week is that I've been unfairly labeled as the horny guy. Oh, yeah. So right. unfair. Online. Yeah. Yep. So it unfair. is. I'm being slut shamed. Yes. Yeah, so and unfair. I'm not that horny. I can't even. I don't know it's slut shamed. I can't. No, you're definitely I not can't slut-shamed. even innocently respond you, to like to a Jim Seltzer Miley tweet. Cyrus. So heaven have forbid, slut shame. Heaven forbid that happens. Yeah. And Billy t- went out and bought a bonk stick. Oh, nice to Good. bonk me. I'm oh. not horny. I'm not horny. <laughs> I'm not horny. And you know what? We were talking about this, this before is like, the show. You're not horny. Billy's not on steroids. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah I not, love the name Grandpa. Hey guys, I swear, I'm not horny. I'm not horny right not, now. I'm not even thinking about sex at yeah. all. But I'm kind of thinking about sex. But I'm also saying that like we took our eye off the ball as a society. Everyone's concerned with being the horny police. We we stop caring about people capping online. No one's accusing people of being capped anymore. And the only the people are capping about not being. Thank horny. God you're 28, because if you were 36, that would be the lamest. No, I'm ever. just saying, like it, everyone, <laughs> we, we as an internet used to be great about being like, yo, that dude's capping right now. <laughs> And that people just forgot about it, and now we're all concerned with, oh, this guy's horny. This guy's like, you just discovered what capping capping actually means. This this guy possibly has a semi-erection right now. Let's bonk him to death. Cap. And so it's everything. This guy's replying to Halle Berry's swimsuit pictures, but he's not horny. It's everything that I tweet is now, like, people are capping about me being horny because it's like, yo, PFT is is so. I don't know how you could make it worse, but you did. (laughs) Because we're all going to be talking about capping now. Capping's back. Yeah. I don't know if this is gonna work. That I know what you're trying so to horny. do. That's cap right now. <laughs> you're trying to switch cap with no horny. cap. Everyone's. Oh. I saw like a bunch of people today start to talk about cap again, and I was like, yeah, that's Colin? a good point. Let's talk yeah. about cap. Mm-hmm. Colin? No, I'm not. No, that's cap. You're cap right now. You're cinnamon toast cap. We should start. For it. We should take that conversation. I can't believe it's not cap. What team should? What team would want Colin Kaepernick as a he starter? He should do another tryout. He should do another tryout. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the perfect time was for the Bears. Like, I can't believe Andy Dalton has a job, but not Cap. Yeah. Then we'd all be talking, and no one would be talking about my dick anymore. Yeah. That's but it's true. not your dick. It's yeah, you. It's you. It's, it's your, your brain. Comment, you're just you're it's running weird. amok with the horny accusations because it was a quote tweet of Holly Berry. I have not made any accusations. I have just said the word bonk. And she said, "Tell me something I don't know." And so I wanted to talk you, to Holly Berry. About wasn't the tweet from like like a month ago too? No, it was like a few days ago when pretty yeah, viral. You just found it. I didn't even know that she was wearing a three days later. Um, all right, my fire fest. Well, it's not a fire. Well, it is a fire fest because I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna say it. Uh, ooh, you get the get the fucking thing ready. I'm having another child. Bonk. <laughs> I so the fire fest part 
is that I having a second kid is like it's not a big announcement. First was obviously a big announcement. That's a life change. Having a second is like, hey, we're going to keep moving. This is pretty sick. Let's like have sequel. another one. Yeah, right. A sequel. So I forgot to like, I've told, I told all, all the guys here uh, a few months ago. I forgot to tell basically uh, anyone besides like my close friends and like some people in the office. So now I have to tell everyone. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's all sympathy weight that you have right now. Yeah, that's sympathy weight. Uh, yeah. Can you believe that I've, I've been doing all this and I have another kid coming? Damn, what a hero. I'm actually not a hero. Can uh, I make a name suggestion? LeBron, yeah, so LeBron. you don't know the sex. Grandpa. Should we do a sex reveal? It's going to be a girl. So that's the other fire Grandma. Fest. I am going to, as of uh, June, <laughs> so it's uh, June 15th to due date. Uh, as of June, I'm going to be forced to do a podcast with a bunch of misogynists, and I'm no longer going to be a misogynist. Mm-hmm. So you, well, you I'm going to have to figure that out. The easy way, just toss in your bio. Yeah. And I'm gonna Father be like, of a oh daughter. shit! The, you know, like I, for some reason, I just love watching women's sports now. It, like that just happened overnight. So big cat, the transformation. Even though I already loved watching it, are you no gonna big deal? Are not, you are you gonna saying. let your daughter read BarstoolSports.com? Yes. Well, I don't think it'll be around by the time she can read. Yeah. Whoa. Well, actually, no. I I was thinking more like the time that she can conceptualize it, like fifteen. Mm-hmm. I wasn't saying like actually read like five years from now. <laughs> yeah, like, um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I was saying more like fifth. Yeah, yeah. Do, well, do you course. know something that we don't know? No, I no. I was I was thinking more like fifteen, sixteen. Yes, of course. She will be a huge Nate Dogg fan, <laughs> and Greeny and Jerry uh, Thornton. Jerry, yeah, Jerry, Jerry Thornton and White <laughs> Sox. Uh, no, but seriously, it is awesome. You shut I, up, Hank. I should. I I will say this. It's funny because I think there's a lot. I don't really talk about my child and my upcoming child much. But I do think there's a lot of dads uh, and moms that listen to this show because when I dropped the Bluey thing uh, with who was on, who was who did we interview? And I talked about Bluey with them. Waka. 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 I had so many tweets about Bluey. So I think there's a big, strong contingent of parents that listen to this show. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. Being a dad is, like, the coolest thing ever. I'm just going to say that. Not to be sappy, but uh, I fucking, like, me and my son, like, we bro out hard. All the time. Like, vibes to the moon, Billy. Think about, like, your coolest friend and just being able to live with them. And then you get to hang out with them. And then you're just chilling. That's my dog. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, dog. Right. Your, your dog. dog and my son, the same thing. Same. But, yeah, so uh, don't make a big deal of it, but that's the big announcement. Billy. Uh, there was a image circulating the internet. Of, of your long-ass nose? My large appendage. Yeah, um, your nose. It was a bad, it's very pointy. I never realized how pointy. No, your it nose was the Yang. So basically, I got Facetime. You got Chloe. A bunch of uh, coworkers at Barstool, and I was like, "Oh man, like they're including me in these group Facetimes." Like I don't spend much time around the office. So I was like, "Wow, like I'm in the club." So I hit accept, and uh, I realized I was holding my phone way too close to my face, and I do have a larger nose, mm-hmm. but the angle of the camera. Yeah, it's pretty. Just, it was it, you're the deviated been, septum. Yeah, it's you know where that come from. It you know I was born with a larger nose, and then years of contact sports, helmets coming down. Oh, so you're making bridge. this about being a jock? Yeah, I mean you know you got some scar tissue on top uh-huh. of a large nose, and uh-huh. it's, it I'll looks put pretty it big. Way. I you would not be invited to Dustin Johnson's after party when he wins the Masters with yeah. a nose like that. Just vacuum it all <laughs> yeah. up, bro. Just uh, Hoover no, and yeah. Schneesh. No. <laughs> Go like that for G- me. Gator tails aren't good for gains. Go like this. Oh, how did you learn give me, that? Give me phrase, one big silly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also whale tails. I have no idea. Yeah, right. You're talking about eating ass. No, I'm talking about Bonk. what Billy's talking about. Bonk yeah, and Billy. There we go. Like, that's, that's cap. That's we're cap. talking about <laughs> coke, and you all of a sudden <laughs> are talking about eating ass. Crazy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, Some great memes though. If you haven't seen the picture, yeah. It was, they, it was, uh, although I guess the funniest joke was from Sopranos, which I didn't know because I fucking stopped watching it. But someone What's said the joke? Billy could smoke a cigarette in in the rain. Yeah, and be just fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. 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 The yes. Nigel Thornberry references were funny. Mm-hmm. I will admit, you yeah. got a beak. It's not a nose. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a beak. beak. It's, yeah, a, no, it's, it's a, a beak. beak. Yeah, it's definitely. It was as bad of a I mean, like I've seen pictures of them where they look fatter than they are. Or sh- well, the Doug's picture is just short, but like it was such <laughs> a bad angle. Yeah. It was one of the worst angles I've ever seen. Yeah. It, the, it made the nose look not only like, you know, it's big already, but like, like long. a Dorito. Yeah. Like yeah, like pointy. The, the, 
like you know how we always joke about how you're always late to places. We should specify that your nose is always on time because it gets here like five <laughs> <Yeah>. minutes early. <laughs> My nose is early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, all right, Jake. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you have Firefest. Yeah, so I've been at home this week, and uh, I noticed. Why? <laughs> Bonk. No, it has nothing to do. He's with been that. jerking off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I noticed that one of the signs on my wall is missing a thumbtack. Oh. And I'm scared. I'm gonna step on it. Oh. Where it is? Three thumbtack. What? That a is predicament. That, that is, could have been for a while. That and, is like, actually it got vacuumed up. a good fire fest. Yeah. Because it's like. The mental anguish is worse yeah. than actually stepping on yes. it. But it could have been for, f- for four months and I'm safe and it's vacuumed up. Or it could have been two days ago and I can't find it. Oh, Do you have geez. any pictures like when you did a FaceTime with us or when you when you no, Skyped in or I Zoomed in? I can go in? home and tweet it. But Why don't you just, I mean, well, no, your place is too big to find it. Is that your only Funny. fire fest? Is your, did you ask your maid if she could find it? <laughs> um, I don't have a maid. Oh, oh shit. Sorry, your uh, your your live-in nanny. Mm-hmm. Nope, I live with me, myself, and I. Is that your only fire fest? I have a few others, but I think what's, they'd make. What the are air. the others? I don't know. What's what does Hank want to talk about? A video, a certain video series. It sounds like you want to talk about. Oh, it. I was no, going to bring uh, it up. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it is actually it interesting. No, it is. So, it is a fire uh, fest. Jake right, yeah. Marsh, who went to Syracuse, Medill, and ever heard of it. Uh, he doesn't know how to say the word mortgage. Oh yeah, yeah. He doesn't know how to say he, the word mortgage. He can't. He pronounces it mort, gidge. Not if you listen to Thursday night's championship show. Give oh, it. Say it. Give it a shot right now. Mortgage. Uh, um, oh. The problem is changed. that there's a YouTube video that has you saying mort-gitch. mortgage multiple times. It's also, I, it was Repeatedly. all the same time. I said it once. No, but they replay it. Oh, <laughs> so okay. It was a voiceover. That that. That changes. That all makes it no, better. I literally, it was one recording. Yeah, okay. yeah, all right. All that right, makes that, it better. That, we that, thought that you were does. just saying it wrong the entire time. No, I wait, said it once. Wait a second, Hank. Are you playing dumb? Did you hear the mortgage and then you inserted it into the video this multiple is where it's times? Like PFT literally thinks I'm Oz. And yeah, like, what are I, you like, doing? I have, PFT? I have nothing, <laughs> literally nothing to do with, with this the video fart series. sound effects that always come out. <laughs> No, it was a voiceover, and they had and me record the ad afterwards. Go take a cold with. shower, horny boy. <laughs> they had me record the ad afterwards, and I read it once, and they plug it in every time there's a player profile. <laughs> that but I read it for the championship. That makes it that, way yeah, better. Yeah, no. Because every Hank time I heard it, it I was for like, me, It was shocking. No, I was I, shocked. Oh, I've gotten criticism in my broadcasting like, career. I've gotten destroyed for this. Well, no, so yeah. here's, here's no, what it is. You get an F- minus at Medill. Here's what it is. Because yeah. they replayed it the first time I heard it, I was like, that was crazy, but it was probably just a one-time thing. And then they kept, every time I heard it, I was like, Jake Jake doesn't know I say oh, mortgage. <laughs> like, I had Jake I missed mortgage. 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 What was going through your head when you said mortgage? I just genuinely thought that's it. I didn't know the T was silent. You didn't? Wait, you, you just learned that the T in mortgage was silent? Yeah. Wow. You should just blame Damn. it on the pink Whitney you're drinking in the booth. Yeah, that's I'm true. I'm not you blaming were, anybody. You were it's drunk. My fault. Just uh, Jake. Take pro accountability, tip. Billy. Pro tip: Say you were drunk. It was footage of you drinking pink Whitney during I the take broadcast. Accountability. That's a fact. It's my fault. Yeah. I messed up. That's a deep, th- deep drive to the left. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's do some numbers. Send everyone on their way. Happy Master Snap. Oh, by the church. way, how about you guys? Like, I'm gonna have a du- well, not this year, but Eight. a double dad, a uh, two kid Masters nap. It hits a little different. Yeah. That's fucking. That's basically my. Are problem. you going to get this a uh, darker pair of the New Balances? I have to. Thirty-four. I'm gonna, dude, shout out Stephen Shea who Six, uh, eighteen. Eight, who when he he has a boy around the same age as my son, and he the unironically award? uses no uh, a son. He unironically uses the hashtag boy dad because <laughs> we don't get included in everything. But now I can use both. Okay. Ninety-nine. Thirty-two. Eight. 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 Big Papi Ortiz. Oh, sorry. 80. Oh. 80. I'm never going to win that. Love you guys. How funny is that? Do you say yeah. sharks don't go to school? Church. What does that mean? It's is that from Finding Nemo? Is that a Nemo? No, it just got sent to me like a 